on the first Easter morning, when Peter and the other disciple learned that the tomb was empty, they ran to Jesus' grave. And over there, they only found the wrapping, uh, linen wrappings and the cloth used to bury their master. The other disciple went in the tomb, saw and believed. And then uh, they both returned to their home. However, Mary Magdalene remained by the tomb, all by herself, weeping. Why did she stay there in the garden? What was she expecting? Who knows? Maybe she was too much in grief to go back to her place. Maybe she was lingering there, hoping to feel Jesus' presence one last time. Maybe she was unable to move on with her life. Much has been said and written about Mary across the centuries. From what we can learn in the Gospel, in the four Gospels she's mentioned, she's began, she began to follow Jesus fairly early in, her, in his ministry. She followed him on his last journey to Jerusalem. And when all the men had fled, she stayed and witnessed the crucifixion with a small group of women. Without a doubt, Mary was part of Jesus' inner circle. She was very close to him. But unfortunately, Jesus' brutal execution marked the end of this wonderful journey. For Mary, hope died on the cross with him. And on Easter morning, when she saw the stone rolled away, she did not shout, Christ is risen. She did not assume resurrection. No, 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 no. She claimed they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have laid him. And, and a little later that day, when she saw a man, she believed he was the gardener and asked him, where is his body? Where is Jesus' body? Because he must have taken him. That was, this was the only logical explanation for her. This was the only possibility Mary could conceive. It's only when she was called by her name, Mary, that she understood who was standing just in front of her. It was Jesus. <laughs> he came back to life, and together they will be able to resume their existence as it was before, as if his death never happened, as if it was just a nightmare. Everything was back to normal. Everything would be wonderful again. However, Jesus had to stop Mary by saying, do not hold on to me. He has to tell her that something has changed. What was in the past will never be again in the future. Do not hold on me again are probably the most essential words to remember for a congregation like this one. Some of you might know that in a few weeks, a few months, an important staff shakeup will happen. After many years of faithful service, Sally, our organist, Linda, our office administrator, and Bev, our minister for children, youth, and young family, will return. And many of us are sad with very good reason about this news. Some might feel like Mary, standing in the garden, lost, wondering what will happen next, or even if there's a future after this. 
maybe others are already waiting impatiently for the coming of new people so we can get back to normal as soon as possible. We can continue exactly what we're doing. We can put this difficult time and difficult moment just behind us. However, the story of Easter teach us that resurrection is not about going back to business as usual. Resurrection is not the same as resuscitation. No, no, no. Resurrection can only happen after an unavoidable and definitive death. Resurrection can only be experienced when we accept to let go. Let go not of our surplus, of, not of the old junk in our life or the clutter that fill our garage or basement, no. But what we might love, what we might cherish the most, letting go when we don't want to let go sometimes. Resurrection also can only happen when we leave behind possession, ideas, certainties, even if we don't see a path forward or a way to replace them. It is when we're ready to stop holding on to the past, as wonderful as it might be, that we can create a space where new life emerge, when transformation becomes conceivable and where possibilities not yet imagined reveals themselves. For, Ma for Mary, resurrection meant letting go of the man she loved so dearly. Jesus of Nazareth died on the cross and will never come again. The risen Christ was now standing in front of her. Mary had to accept that he was not the same. No wonder the disciple never recognized him right away after the resurrection. I don't know if you noticed that in the scripture. They met Jesus and they don't see it's the risen Christ. It's not because they forget their old master, it's just, it's just different. It was not quite him. And at the same time, it was him. His essence, his message, his ministry remained the same, if it, even if it looked a bit different. And this radical transformation allowed Mary and, and the first disciple to discover a new way to believe and also to be the church. They were forced to give up being told what to do and how to behave by a charismatic and inspiring leader. They understood that the risen Christ could not be with them in the same way Jesus was. But with time, they discovered inside of themselves the strength to continue their journey. They found the determination to engage the world like they never did before. Jesus' resurrection led them to become more than they thought they were. And like Mary and the first disciple, we are invited at our turn to follow the same path. In our families, in our neighborhood, in our congregation, in our world, there are so many opportunities for new life, new possibility, new wonders, if we find the courage to embrace the transformation brought by the risen Christ. Of course it's not easy. No, it's not easy. Things never go as planned. Most of the time we're caught off guard, new challenge, emerge constantly. There's always something we never thought of possible that shows up. Death, departure, retirement will always be, will always be parts of our human existence. However, when we accept to let go, to accept that the future will be different, not necessarily better or worse, just different. 
and belief that life beyond death is possible, we can discover hope and confidence. We can trust in a new, that new ways will bring us to new territories. We can believe that ever, everywhere, at wherever we go, the risen Christ will be with us and forever. He will always show us the way. He will teach us how to navigate all the transformation we face in our lives. On the first Easter morning, Mary Magdalene discovered that her life would never be the same again. And this was good news because change and transformation helps help us to see the world differently, to create spaces for new life, to encounter the risen Christ when we might expect it the least. As author Mary Gordon wrote, for me the meaning of resurrection is the possibility of possibility. Christ is risen and is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And amen.